Hey guys, welcome to Bubble Man's World. Uh, today I wanted to take you guys through a little bit of a, uh, I guess a pre-review of the new Sasquatch Rosin Press that I got from the Sasquatch Rosin Press Company, uh, owned by, of course, Soil Grown Sal, um, Philip, Phil, uh, if you check out Instagram, Soil Grown, uh, under slash, underscore solventless, uh, Soil Grown Solventless, I believe is his name. Um, has these incredible presses that he's come to design. Of course, we all know Soil Grown for his popularizing of the um, rosin method and really for taking it to the next level and bringing and creating uh, flower rosin. Before, uh, the first time I'd heard of rosin was only from hash. It wasn't as exciting. Um, there wasn't an easy way to do it. It was a bit of a pain in the ass. And so Phil really brought it to the next level and created his Soil Grown brand and he created his Sasquatch Rosin Press, which he's uh, operating that company with some of his cousins, I believe. And they're just a great crew of guys that are just looking to better the movement. They definitely don't have some horrible agenda of trying to take advantage of people. They're ready to learn and they're, they're looking to share their education in a good quality product. I was lucky enough to get one. Customized plates, beautiful plates. I'll tell you a little bit about the unit. Um, it comes uh, with a nice 20 ton jack. Um, I've hooked it up to the DeWalt 15 ton uh, 2000, uh, 200 psi air compressor. Very inexpensive. It was about 300 US dollars for this big ass uh, air compressor. And the unit is great. It's uh, the bottom plate is the heated unit, and the reason they went with a one heated plate was that. Um, the plates are so big and they hold the temperature so well that once you get both plates up to temperature, and I'll tell you how to do that in about a second, they hold the temperature really well and for a good chunk of time. So the bottom plate is impeccably wired, it's, it heats up beautifully, it's got a real nice uh, uh, digital readout, you can control any temperature that you want to put into the decimal point. And what we do is, um, which, which is what Soil Grown told me personally to do, which was to bring the bottom plate up to temperature with the top plate hovering a half an inch or so above. And once you get that bottom plate up to temperature, lower the plates so they touch. And in the touching, you basically will heat your second plate. Uh, you can leave this thing on all throughout the day, so this would really be only something that you would do in the morning as you were starting your day if it was a work tool that you were using commercially. I'm using it just personally, but I still come in the morning and I turn it on and I leave it on all day. Um, we did talk a little bit about how long it takes for the plates to heat up. I found that for me it took about 15 minutes. Uh, Soil Grown said that it can take up to 30 or 40 minutes if it's a real cold morning and you go out to your shop and you turn them on and they're really cold. So I didn't experience that. It was very nice out around 70 degrees and I found in a 70 degree temperature they were able to heat up within 15 minutes and get to temperature. Um, he's told me that he's used a little laser uh, temperature um, gate uh, to, to read out the temperature thermometer and he said his press plates have been in within one degree of the actual temperature so nice accuracy there uh, overall it's a nice little unit it's extremely heavy I wouldn't suggest trying to use uh, lift the unit by itself but he did put on two nice big handles at the top that uh, makes it possible and uh, yeah, I mean, what else can I say about this thing other than let me show you some of the footage of what we did the other day. We used some sweet skunk uh, bubble hash, which I'll show you right now. Uh, as you can see, the quality uh, isn't the top, top quality, but it's definitely not too bad. All right, so this is the sweet skunk 73 micron that we're pressing. It's, uh, it's like a 3, 3.5 star. has a great bouquet to it, the nose, but uh, it is pushing out the most golden delicious rosin. Alright, so what I didn't show on camera yesterday, which was the preparation, I'm sure the majority of you guys understand and know. And so I wanted to show you uh, really simply, you know, for those of you that are going to wonder and haven't seen my other videos, uh, I take uh, one of these little screens, these are some from, from Soil Grown that he sent me. He sent me a nice big schwack of these screens, shout out to those guys for that. 
And what I usually do is I use a sticker or usually I use a business card and I get it into there just like that and you can easily scoop bubble hash out. And what we did was we put about six to eight grams in each one. My buddy had them substantially thicker, so I thinned them out. I, rather, I would rather do a long, a big flat surface area uh, than one that's too fat and thick. So a way to up your numbers is to simply, um, you can really see this, this one had a little bit of a blowout, and you can see that the stuff that's remaining is really just uh, not even like hash anymore. It's just uh, powdery, sort of talcum powdery stuff. Good for who knows what, maybe a coconut oil extract. It would definitely be interesting to see these get tested for cannabinoid and terpene profile to see what gets left behind, if anything. I'm sure there's a percentage of cannabinoids. I'm sure there's even a percentage of terpenes. Um, and that's it. I guess we'll finish it off with some money shots of the OG and the sweet skunk that we pressed. You can see in the videos that I'm a noob. I wanted to see the waterfall effect and wasn't quite sure how far back I had to leave the little packet. So the packet slid forward each time with the hash bulbing out of the two presses. Uh, this is a dangerous game because you can breach. Uh, your screen get a blowout, uh, a cut, and then that is, is obviously going to contaminate your hash. A few times we actually thought it had happened when it hadn't. Just from the bubbles in the rosin creating a darker strip down the middle, we assumed it was some black uh, from hash that was coming out from the inside, but on a few occasions it was not the case. So. Just a short little video, I'm going to get a lot better. I want to do a full video where you see me sitting at the press and showing the whole process, but this just... Uh, this just lets you see what's capable for now. Thanks for watching Bubble Man's World. All right, so this is the DeWalt 15 gallon, not 15 ton, uh, 200 PSI air compressor, the one Soil Grown uses. Here's his uh, custom Bubble Man's World plates uh, with the 20 ton jack attached on his Sasquatch press. And here is the PDI temperature controller, the set and the up and down button, the original flower rosin. Brought to you by Sasquatch Rosin Press. And here we are doing the first press with some OG Kush 3 star bubble hash. 8 grams in the pouch. Go down a little bit, like real slow and gentle. Kind of pre-squish it. Wait like 2 or 3 seconds. And then squish. Ooh. Glad that didn't blow out. Doggy, doggy, are you kidding me, bro? Wow, this thing feels like fucking empty now, bro. Oh, is that nice looking resin, dude? Are you kidding me? Well, you can see it come out as you click more. Put that darkness in it again. I hope we didn't blow it. Looks like it though, eh? Not too bad, it kind of just dissipated.
You can see the absolute stunning quality of this resin. Uh, it's just dripped beautifully. I didn't show you, but it's literally as hard as a rock now. I could peel these little pieces off pretty good. Lots of tiny little air bubbles, which makes for really nice macro photographs. I'm not going to lie, we were extremely happy with how this press turned out. This was the OG Kush 3 Star, keep in mind, and we were getting over 50% yields. That's pretty impressive for 3 Star. So next up we have the Sweet Skunk. This was like a 3.5, close to a 4 star. Um, we wrapped it up, did about 7 grams I do believe. Um, got the patty pushed in far enough this time so we didn't have the near blowout. Uh, listening to Soil Grown's tip which was to reduce the plates to the point where they're just about squishing where you can see now the oil just just starting to come out of the lip of the screen give it a couple of more and you see the oil actually start dripping and uh, we used a little bit lower of a PSI on this one the color was just phenomenal both of us actually laughed at this point in the video uh, as we were filming it because the color was just so beautiful. Even with uh, the 250 degree temperature and pressing for quite a long time, I mean you can, I don't know if it was a 15 second or even potentially a 20 second press, but it was longer than I normally press because of the lack of pressure. It wasn't pushing it all out. It was kind of sitting there. I also didn't realize a lot of the resin was um, going out the backside of the area. When we opened it up, there was a nice squish all the way around the screen, as you can see here, as we open up these plates and, and uh, get that parchment open up. You can see it squished all the way around and uh, the patty just fell right out with the screen. The resin was just beautiful to collect. Uh, you can see it here coming up in a second. Um, I managed to just grab one section of it with my dabber and it just peeled off beautifully. You can see it here. There's a nice dab, I would say. Very nice color, very nice taste. It's got that extreme strong, spicy, exotic haze taste that I love so much. I'll give it a squish. Okay, so this is the last press that we're gonna share with you here. This was a near blowout. I once again left the packet too close to the edge of the press, and you can see that dark piece that's pushing out in the center is actually the screen. It's not really ideal or how you want to do it, but I was already committed and the rosin was coming out uh, quite lovely for the amount. You know, this is a seven gram of hash. Second run, we were getting uh, quite nice returns, which is uh, upwards of the 70%, uh, which is very high for a three star and even a 3.5, and it's kind of why I was hinting that it could be potentially close to a four. Even though the melt factor wasn't there, uh, the resin uh, is de was definitely yeah, you know, inside those gland heads. There's a nice big clear dome popping up. And that's all she wrote. We're going to pull this off and collect it. Share you one last little clip of some like rosin dripping down, down the screen in a so nice close-up. Here's that. Drip, drip, drip. And I want to thank you guys all for watching this video and spending time with us here on Bubble Man's World. Thanks a lot, Soil Grown and Sasquatch. You guys rule. Peace.